G'day, Eddie Springer from Springer Solar. Here to talk to you about uh, appliances and energy draw and wattage of different appliances and what we, what's practical and what's not so practical to run while we're on the road. So on our little uh, display setup we have here, we've got a simple voltmeter and a battery monitor. Now this is a Victron battery monitor, allows us to see battery voltage, amps, watts, and amp hours consumed out of our battery. The main thing that we're gonna look at today is the wattage or the power draw of each of these different items and also how that relates to amps out of our battery. So we'll start and we will, we will look at a few different items that we're going to run. We've even got a trusty little pie warmer here to show you what a, a, a larger load will, will draw and, and, and we'll talk about things, things that we can and can't do on the road. So small LED lights, you know, are drawing between the two of them up to about one amp. Now one amp equates to, you know, 12 or 13 watts. We continue to run those lights for an hour, we've drawn one amp hour or 12 watt hours out of our battery in that hour. Okay, so lighting, fans, small speakers and things like that aren't drawing a hell of a lot of energy out of our batteries. The main items that we need to be concerned about are our cooling devices, so refrigeration, and our heating, or our cooking. You know, they're our larger items that are gonna drain our batteries and flatten our batteries pretty quick. So while we're on lights and fans, we'll turn these guys off. We drop back to just our standby load of two watts. Let's have a look at some fans. So, small Sirocco fan here, low, medium, and high, you know, it's drawing five or six watts. The energy draw from a very um, sophisticated little fan is quite low. You can run that for 10 hours overnight, set the timer on it, run that fan for long continuous periods, and it's gonna drain very small amount of power out of your battery. Alternatively, trying to run an air conditioner through an inverter system off your battery, you're gonna be flat pretty quickly. This is drawing 12 watts. Um, your air conditioner might be drawing 1200 watts. Okay, so that's our little fan drawing you know, five or six watts, not even 12 watts. We've got other lights here that allow us to see what they're drawing. Okay, so up to about 10 watts for a nice interior LED. Add all these items on and we get to a total power draw of 25, 26 watts. Very low amount. Lighting, fans, small appliances, not something we need to consider too much. So beyond lighting, you know, one of the biggest things we need to power from our auxiliary batteries in our RVs is our fridge, our refrigeration. Determining the power draw from a fridge is, is a gray area. You know, we need to know lots of different things about how you're using that fridge. How big is the fridge? How, how many liters does it, uh, uh, does it hold? How cold do you run it? You're running it at minus one, you're running it at four degrees, you're running it as a full freezer. Various different sizes of fridges will draw a different amount of energy. Our small 25 to 35, 40 liter fridges are going to draw anywhere between 20 to 30 amp hours per day. Okay, about an amp an hour when they're, they're quite cold, you're not in the tropics, you know, your, your Waco, your Ingle, your Evercool, any different brand of refrigeration, small device, if it's quite new, between 20 to 30 amp hours a day. If you're running that fridge in Tasmania, you'll get it below 20 amp hours a day, you know, less than an amp an hour. As we go up in refrigeration size, we start drawing more energy. You go to your 50 and 60 litres, your 80 litre, your 110 litre fridge, you start drawing more and more energy out of your battery system. We need to size our batteries accordingly. We need to ensure that we're charging them enough to run those fridges. 60 litre fridge, 80 litre fridge, we're gonna start drawing 50 and 60 amp hours a day. 110 litre fridge, we're drawing between 50 and 70 amp hours a day all depending on how cold we run it 
whether we're putting a hot carton of beer into it every day or filling it with, with hot food that we need to ch chill each day will determine our, our energy draw from those appliances. Once we get past our cooling, we start looking at heating. So what can we run as a, as a cooking load on our battery systems? Well, for small systems, very little. You know, our batteries should be there to run our small appliances and any cooking that we want to do or any heating we want to do should be done on gas. You know, this is a small 12 volt pie warmer. This device draws 120 watts when running. We try and cook a, a roast in this while we're stationary without a vehicle running. We're pulling 10 amps worth of power out of our battery every hour. You know, we can turn the timer on, run the element up in it, and we can see on our display here, it's drawing 9 amps and 110 watts. Okay, our battery won't sustain that energy for long periods of time. But this device is fine to be run while we're driving. Our dual battery system, our vehicle alternator is delivering that charge into our auxiliary battery. And these guys will perfectly run for hours while we're driving. You know, pick your destination, put a couple of frozen pies in there, an hour, an hour and a half later, get to your location, pies are uh, toasty, you know, you're ready to roll. But practically running that while stationary, unless the sun's shining, you've got a big solar system, you will struggle to keep up to it. Other cooking elements that we might consider impractical to run while we're away would be uh, a toaster or a fry pan. Now you can run these systems on large vehicles, lithium batteries, lots of solar, but on a small uh, vehicle setup, small caravan setup, you're better off trying to move to a gas cooking device for these appliances. So those large heating loads, we really need to try and do outside on the barbecue, away from our batteries. You know, batteries trying to run inverters to, to sustain cooking, you either need a very expensive setup or you're going to shorten the life of your battery dramatically. You know, although an electric blanket might seem like a good idea to take, you know, keep you comfortable at night, the overall 10 hours of sleeping with an electric blanket on during 30 or 40 watts per hour, you're really going to start draining your batteries quickly. And we need them for our essential services like fridges and lighting. So be careful about what you want to take. Choose your appliances properly and carefully. Look at the wattage of the different devices you want to use so that you extend the life of your batteries and you're not over discharging that battery. Another item that some people talk to us about running is air conditioning. You know, can I run my air conditioner off my batteries? Well, the answer is yes, but to do it economically is a no. You know, I've got some caravan setups, big lithium batteries, rooftop covered in solar panels that can run an air conditioner for an hour or two in the middle of the day, but to sustain an air conditioning load for long periods of time off a battery bank is really impractical. The cost, of my, the cost to outlay onto that sort of system just to run an air con, you know, is not something that's feasible for the everyday RVer. So air conditioning is generally a no. When you're sizing your system and designing your RV with your batteries and your auxiliary battery system to run different items, be careful with what you use. Lighting fans, other devices, no problem. The larger equipment you want to run, choose carefully because the bigger the load, the bigger the device, the more batteries you'll need and the more cost you'll have involved. And the harder it is to charge them each day and sustain those items day in, day out while you're on the road and while you're on your trip. Thanks very much.